Greetings, Alex here again. Now, as you know, I took May as a work vacation type of a thing, worked on a bunch of fun projects, filmed a fantastical amount of footage that I have all dumped on a hard drive and I'll make use of in the future. And I have a um, fun little series that's gonna come out soon. Fun for me, hopefully they're fun for you. But if they're not, you don't have to watch them. But this one, I had a question on the mouse switch thing that related to um, a video on that subject that I already shot, already put in the editor, already did all of the splicing. I just never got around to like doing the voiceover and exporting it. So uh, sorry to return on this video after a couple weeks of absence, but it was already done. All I had to do was talk with my stupid voice over top of it and explain what's going on in the little moving pictures. So anyways, I'm putting this out right now, and then the, the other things in there all kind of mix in with the uh, other series when I get back to it. Some of the stuff I did monopolized all of the space, and that's one of the reasons I had to kind of do the detach and do separate thing, uh, and put the brakes on a lot of the like, you know, 3D printing and the microcontroller and like those kinds of series. Because this is what my workshop looks like right now. Oh God. Oh God, no. Oh, why? What is it all? Yeah, not getting a lot of work done there. So I am on schedule to finish all of that up by this weekend, clean everything, and then get back to normality. So anyway, for right now, let's talk about uh, some of these micro switches. So what I did, and this was a few months back, was uh, make a little jig to weigh the click force required for like 20 or 24 or something different switches um, recorded all of that and then I just cut it into segments where I put the force required to click it and then busted the switch open stuck it under a microscope so you could see the construction of the switch the the contacts look at like the quality of everything what's going on inside that type of thing so a lot of these switches some of them i just sort of like grabbed off of like thrift store office mice and things like that just as for comparison but uh, most of the popular gaming switches are in here or at least a representation of the series of switches that they come from so it'll be a good opportunity to just Take a quick peek inside at each of them, see what makes them tick, and then do you can do a little bit of a compare and contrast there. And as with all of these kinds of videos, I will put a time index, uh, clickable time index in the video description below. So if you want to jump back and forth from one switch or another, um, you can just go ahead and do that. I know as well as you do, it's a huge pain in the butt as we're running through these mouse mice generations and the the, the uh, classic switch designs just don't seem to be working. And some of the reasons for that are in a previous video that I did. Uh, maybe I'll link it down here. So if you're interested in all those geeky details, check that video out. And if you just stumbled across this video and you don't want to go through that whole thing, here's kind of a summary of the issue. I got tired of swapping out the switches on my mice and if you look online there's like a lot of sort of hearsay about how to fix the problems and what the issues actually are but I thought I would go and check the actual mechanical and electrical problems that may or may not be involved and sort of came to the conclusion that one of the main problems compared with like ye old reliable mice from back in the day that just seemed to work forever is that the paradigm is shifting as far as like the uh, logic circuits involved in the actual switches and in the microcontrollers and the topology that they used. And you end up with a lot of like click bounce and chatter and uh, drag and drop problems and things like that. I would say the first big paradigm shift was between like 5, point, or 5 volt and 3.3 uh, volt logic. And then the second big one was between that 3.3 volt logic and the lower powered uh, wireless circuits they used to extend battery life. What happens is that when you're using microloads with a switch, they lack wetting current, which is a little bit of bzzz that breaks through like the oxide coatings and things like that on the contact and allows them to, well, make contact. And even though the older designs were working below those specifications, they were still high enough powered that they seemed to work, whereas the new ones fail electrically much sooner. And by fail, I mean the switches are actually electrically and mechanically, holy crap, bro. Anyway, electrically and mechanically pretty much just fine, but they cease to be able to function in the circuit that they're placed. 
because they just straight up use the wrong type of construction, the wrong type of contacts, and the wrong type of materials for those contacts. Now, there are also things that tie into it like polling rate, your debounce routines, your firmware interrupt settings uh, to when it's polling for another click, wear on the contacts, etc., etc., etc. But they painted themselves into the corner by hyping these particular types of switches that were popular with the gamers, tried to fix the problem a little bit with the new 50 million billion bajillion series switches, but it didn't end up working out all right for them. And if anyone thinks I'm wrong about this, I'm more than happy for a Logitech representative to come here and tell me then why the freaking heck do their mice die after a couple weeks or months of use nowadays. Anyway, rant mode off. So basically what the testing and the evidence shows is that lower logic voltage plus lower switch contact current plus improperly spec switches for the use in conjunction with faster polling rates, which means faster debouncing, etc., etc., possibly inadequate firmware and gaming use case as in not the perfect click type equals these click issues and early failure of the switches, failure in quotes. So, in addition to whipping out a meter and actually measuring uh, a couple of these mice circuits and whipping out the calculator and going all science on their asses, I pulled a bunch of switches from like working and non-working mice to investigate, as well as going on to like Mauser and Amazon.com and all those types of things to grab an assortment of switches so that I could test them and compare them, open them up, put them under a microscope, see what's going on, and try to figure out what I wanted to do with my personal mice. And then as an extension of that, what all you can choose to do. So I'm not going to tell you, you know, what's the best, what's the best for you, that type of thing. But I am going to examine all of these different models, look at the click force, take them apart, take pictures of the contacts and the construction, try to figure out what materials they're made out of, and then give you a little bit of commentary about the whole thing so you can make the choice on your own, or at least be informed about what's going on. I even went on Amazon and I bought one of these, which is like the cheapest soldering, desoldering kit that I could find, so that if somebody had to do this for their own stuff, or if they wanted to do their own experiments, they would have a, like at least a tested and reliable setup. So I'll post that as an affiliate link in the uh, video description below. And as far as the weight setup, I took a spare piece of linear rail that I bought for a 3D printing project and just used this gram scale and repeated the test several times to make sure that everything was cool. 3D printed myself a little jig that I could rest these on and VHB taped the whole thing to a slab of marble so I could have nice consistent results. So here's a chart of the actual data that I got in like, you know, descending order of how hard it is to actuate these. And the good Lord part was that I got to see consistency between the various switches of the same type. And some of them were all over the freaking map. Some of them were actually pretty tight. For example, the uh, Japanese made D2F Omrons, um, they were very consistent, but all the D2FC Chinese ones, they were kind of all over the map. Some of them were tighter than others. And the regular white like TTC office clickers, like, oh my God, they were all over the place. And I did not measure the uh, actuation distance, which I probably should have while I had all these out, but sorry about that. I did a couple notes about which ones seem particularly short or long. So anyway, let's break down some of these. I'll do some of the cheapies and some of the good ones. Again, you can use the um, navigation links in the uh, item description to jump around to the ones that you want to see. First off are some cheapies from like office mice. They're just labeled G, I guess G for generic, but this is a G yellow dot. Looks like kind of an Omron clone type of a deal. And as you can see with the contact here, it has a similar construction to like the Omron Chinese type with the single plate spring design, a uh, rivet for the contact, which makes contact with kind of a rough stamped metal sort of a part that's coated with some kind of other alloy. Same goes for this other G, which seems slightly higher quality. This is uh, differentiated only by like the white dot and it has about, you know, a 10, 12 or so grams lower actuation force. Here's a better view of the uh, contact area. It's pretty much the same as the other one, single plate, Omron type design, etc., etc. And you can see the excessive wear on the rivet from the uh, friction of the dissimilar metals making contact. 
Here's another like kind of generic office mouse one just labeled IB. It was a red dot, slightly higher actuation force around like 68 grams average for the ones that I had. The plates on this you see are fairly generic. They're fairly rough. This sort of like pinched top contact is looks more like the, the Juano style. But the, uh, the top rivet here and the stamp plate and all that is kind of Amran Chinese as well. And then another office guy, uh, slightly stiffer. This was just labeled CF. Extremely similar construction to the last one. The same kind of like pinched contact up at the top. The single plate Omron design, a little bit rough with a large contact rivet making uh, contact with a dissimilar metal stamped plate. Now, speaking of Juano, let's look at an actual Juano. This has a green dot and it had a pretty low actuation force, about 58 grams. You can see that construction very similar to the previous two. It has that kind of pinch construction there for the contact to sort of keep it where it's supposed to be. A smaller contact for the spring, but then a very large rivet on the top, which as you can see from these picks is a, it's a very large rivet, still a lot of wear on that from the dissimilar metals. Obviously not a noble contact, but it's probably an oxide with particles in it of some kind. Along that same type of construction, this is a YSA red dot with an extremely high actuation force. Kind of decent quality for this type of construction. It still uses single plate design, the sort of pinched contact, the smaller contact for the spring. It uses the kind of rough brushed copper plate or, you know, phosphor bronze or whatever it, it is. The, the large square rivet with the contact area, it appears to actually be plated with a noble metal, so that's good. But it is against dissimilar materials, so you can see that there's a decent amount of wear here. Same goes for this extremely common TTC white dot. Higher actuation force, 88 grams. This is obviously, this is an office clicker. Small contact area, Juano type design, pinched up at the top here. This one's mangled for some reason. And it has the, the very large cylindrical rivet for the contact plate. It's very similar to that uh, Juano green dot that we looked at a couple ago. So yeah, that's all those generic guys. Let's look at something completely As you can different. see, the plate this is, is a Honeywell completely ZX decoupled from the pressing by the spring. And the plunger actually pushes against that spring there. And the body of the spring actually, I oh got it said spring like three times in a row and it's driving me crazy, prevents you from overpress. It's also micro voltage, micro current rated, and it has gold plated contacts on both the clicker plate as well as the stationary contacts. I figured I'd get to give this a try because it's like, it's unique. Uh, it seems to be rated properly and it looks like it would be extremely simple to rebuild if and when the contact actually does wear out because you just undo the spring, it'll pop that plate right off. You could take the guts from another one and pop it into the mouse without having to desolder the whole thing again. So I just figured I'd give it a try and I'll let you guys know if it blows up or anything. The downside, I guess, of this is that it doesn't feel like any of the other switches. So my runner up choice I'm gonna try in a different mouse is this Panasonic AH series. Seems like a pretty decent solidly built switch that's uh, micro load laden, has a very light um, actuation and it uses high quality contacts. Uh, the single spring like Omron style, but as you can see right here, it has plated contacts on the top and the bottom as well as a similar feel to the Omron type because of this very similar spring system and contacts. And it should be just as easy as an Omron to rebuild. Just pull that one leaf plate out and stuff another one in there. Speaking of Omron, this is one of their gray dot series, which are the, the heavier duty ones. This is what you might see in some of the old Apple mice. And as you can see right here, it has a dual spring design. So in addition to the, uh, the leaf here, it has the return spring that's a completely separate piece. That way we can, you can tune the feel a little bit more, but it does have this kind of cheaper stamped plate design and then the uh, sort of, I don't know, trapezoidal shaped pop rivet on there. Although the stamping isn't as rough as some of these, I still expect it to, you know, have roughly the same life. Moving on to a completely different brand. This is a CNK ZMA white dot. These have a pretty low actuation force, 68 grams, and a uh, leaf spring that's very similar to the Juano types. 
It has the smaller contact area, as you can see, with the guides to keep it from wandering back and forth, and a very large ribbit, which appears to be coated in silver, which makes contact with the stamps plate, which is fairly well machined, but uh, and it's coated, but dissimilar enough that I would say this is like an intermediate step between like the proper dual rivet types and the uh, single plate clicker types, like this one, which is sort of your bog standard Omron uh, D2FC type. This is the three million rated ones, the yellow dots, they're in a ton of different mice, from desktop computing mice to gaming mice and that sort of thing. They use the same type of plate as the other ones, slightly higher tension than the, uh, the gaming style, but as far as the internals, they look virtually identical, which you can see when you compare it to something like this, which are the Omron 50 million switches, or the blue dots as they're known, right around the same type of resistance around 65 grams and it's fairly consistent from one to another large contact area right here and in the middle where the return spring is similar in design to the others in the series except the uh, stamping is coated the machining appears to be a little bit nicer and it does have a slightly nicer rivet on it that they seem to have put a little bit more care in the mounting so definitely a step up, but as we've seen, the proof is in the pudding and they just don't seem to be working in these circuits. But as a retrofit into an old mouse, it'd probably be great. Now here's another Omron I wanted to look at. These are the NH red dots. They're uh, significantly stiffer than the other types that we looked at in the gaming series. These are popular with like the big paw mouth breathing masher types, which is fine. I don't judge your lifestyle. As you can see right here, it uses the older style stampings, not like the 50 million cycle ones, but it's pretty high quality. It's obvious that the stampings are coated. So if you're a guy looking for something a little stiffer and you had luck with like the regular Omrons, uh, these might be worth a look. And by regular Omron, I essentially mean these. These are extremely pop, probably the most popular gaming switch up until relatively recently. Around a 62 gram resistance, many of us have millions of clicks on these. You can see that the stamping is not quite as good as like the NH series or the 50 million cycle series. And they still have the lack of the stationary rivets, which again, used to be fine, but now we need something more like this. Now these are typically called the Japanese Omrons, the D2F series. They have an extremely light touch. So that's why I didn't use these for my left click button. I did use this for my right click button on my G502. Across the board from three different sources, these were very consistent as far as resistance. They were all almost exactly somewhere between like 55 and 58 grams. And again, they did seem to have a shorter stroke and a lighter touch than uh, the other Omron style switches that I tried. The reason I'm hopeful for these is they're rated for the right currents and voltages, and they use proper gold-plated rivets on both the stationary contacts and the moving contacts, and the stamping and machining seems pretty good on a lot of these. The consistency in the uh, click weights tells me that quality control is pretty good. So the only concern that I would have was because of the lighter touch and the precious metals on the context, that they're not as electrically rugged as the other types. And uh, if you're masher in particular, you might wear them out a little bit quicker, but that's kind of a wash when it comes to like the micro power circuits because they tend to be more electrically robust and stand uh, a little bit longer generally speaking. And that's according to like my tests and the general community at large. Now let's get back to something that's not Omron. This falls into the same like actuation pressure category. This is the kale white dots that are in every freaking office mouse ever. These are definitely a budget switch. They have a, a cheaper style plate, um, rougher stamping. They do have a decent large rivet, but the oxide coating on it tells me that this is, you know, not a precious metal that we're talking about here. Probably some kind of sputtered oxide feels to me like a cheaper version of something like this, which are the Huano blue shell white dot types. These are the slightly stiffer ones. Some people like them, some people don't, but they have the same lineage and construction as the other Huano types, um, which of course bear more than a passing resemblance to the Omrons. And as you can see from this picture coming up, these plates are a little bit mangled. They're, they seem to be super light for some reason, even though they're slightly stiffer than you know your typical Omrons. And I've actually used these in the past and I've had the plates sort of like bend and distort a little bit and they stop clicking. But they have a decent rivet, a decent simulated crossbar type thing with the stamping, which appears to be coated, which is good. 
you can see right here that you do have it digging into it a little bit because of the dissimilarity in the hardness of the materials, but that's to be expected from any of this type of design. All right, so that's the end of the evaluations, but while I have you on the horn here, let me do a little bit of a compare and contrast between some of these that I know that you would be interested in, like the 50 million cycle jobbers to the seven ends, the Huano style to the Amran style, the Japanese to the Chinese, etc., etc. First off, let's do the previous generation of the, like, the gaming style to the current generation, so like the 7N to the 50 million click blue dots. The top one right here is the 50M, and then the bottom one right here is going to be the 7N. You can see that, I mean, obviously, they're all from the same family. They're very similar, but if you look at the contact points on the stampings, you can see how much broader the 50M are and how much better the stamping is. You can also see the difference in the coating between them. There's some kind of heat treatment and oxide coating on the 7Ms, but the 50Ms appear to have an actual, like, noble metal type coating of some sort. Not positive, but it looks that way slightly different alloy used in the spring plates of both of these. The 7N on the left looks a little bit more coppery, brassy, and then the 50 million on the right looks a little bit more bronzy to me, just to my eye, I'm not positive. It also appears that they've done a slightly better job aligning this bottom click contact with the 50M. Previous versions of these, if you've ever taken them apart and looked where the wear is on the rivet, you can see that they have a problem with striking kind of off center and as a result, the plate sort of twist and there's excess wear put on the contacts. So that combined with the wider pivot should give it a more stable base and a little bit better performance in that regard. But again, this is just an updated version of the tried and true Omron designs. So let's look at something that's completely different, i.e. the Japanese versus the Chinese style. Now, the Japanese versus the Chinese guys, they're not just the same thing sourced from different places. They're completely different switches. Here is the Japanese design. You can see it has the dual springs right there. Here's where the click strikes. And then you can see the contact knocking back and forth between the two stationary contacts, all of them being riveted. Also, as you can see right here with overpress, you have a rolling action on those contacts that actually helps scrub it clean a little bit at the expense of slightly more wear, but if they're similar hardness materials, that shouldn't be as big an issue. This is what the click mechanism looks like on the 50M Chinese style right here. And then we can look back and forth at these so you can see the difference between them. Here's the Japanese style with the double springs and the rivets on the contacts. And then here's the Chinese style. And if you take the plates off and lay them next to each other, obviously you can see the big difference in the contact rivet here. The left is the Chinese style, the 50M, and the right is the uh, Japanese style. With the most obvious difference being this massive gold-plated rivet on the Japanese style, as opposed to the smaller crossbar style rivet on the um, Chinese style. Now let's look at the Omron 50M as opposed to that wacky Honeywell switch that I was talking about. And remember I said these feel completely different than the other styles of switches, and you'll see why here in a second. The plunger actually clicks on this spring itself. So it presses this down and then boom, you have your switch plate that knocks back and forth between the stationary contacts. Now, as you can see right here, overpress is limited by the body of the spring itself. So the travel feels stiffer and shorter than it actually technically is on the other ones. Like the actuation is kind of, uh, the point is relatively the same place in the travel, but since your overpress is limited by the physical body of that spring itself, it actually feels shorter and stiffer. As compared to the 50M style right here, where your overpress is only limited by how far the uh, body, the plastic shell allows your plunger to overpress. Also with the Honeywell, on click and drag moves where you may be modulating pressure on your mouse button, you can see that it doesn't actually affect the clicker plate or the contact at all. They stay right where they are. As opposed to the 50M Omron style, which you can see as you modulate the pressure, it kind of chatters the contacts back and forth against each other, and that's part of why you have that click and drag issue. The Juanos that I had to take apart dealt with the overpress a little bit differently than the Omrons did. They actually have this little molded platform right here that limits how far down that you can press. I imagine in addition to any stops that they have on the shell as well, but that partially contributes to the slight difference in feel with this style. 
as opposed to something like this uh, D2FC7 regular Omron dual spring style, which other than the uh, plunger being stopped by the actual shell lets you sort of press to your heart's content. And then finally, remember I mentioned some of those that were kind of an intermediate between the two styles? Well, this is one of those. It uses a larger gold-plated rivet, but it makes contact against a dissimilar metal stamp. And as you can see right here, that precious metal gets ground down pretty easily because gold is soft. So even if you have a nickel substrate underneath, you're eventually going to get that worn down and it's not going to make very good contact. Now, somebody has started sawing pieces of wood in half out there, so I'm going to stop talking. If you dig this type of content, my support links are in the video description below. I'll put Amazon links to uh, this desoldering kit, as well as a couple different variations of these switches here. So you can try them out yourself, and if you buy them through my link, I get, you know, a couple pennies, or whatever. Unfortunately, these wacky Honeywell switches are extremely hard to find. I had to get them surplus from England, so if I get a good lead on those, I'll let you know. But I'll try to find out what bulk distributor has the uh, Panasonic switches and I'll list those down there. They are a little bit more expensive and unfortunately from those types of distributors, they're used to dealing with large bulk orders. So usually minimum shipping is like five bucks, but they don't have a minimum parts order. So thanks for watching and until the next video, get out there and make something awesome.